um, we're based in Killarney and Kerry. Um, so uh, you have all obviously made uh, successful applications under the sports capital program. I don't know if it was uh, 2015 or earlier applications. Um, you will have some of you might already have experience of drawing down sports capital grants, and other people will be new to the process. So uh, the main thing that has changed um, over the last few years is the introduction of the Oscar pro the pro uh, system, which is the portal now for making grant applications and drawing down your, your grant applications. Um, you'll be familiar, most of you maybe were the people who registered your clubs on the system or made the applications. Um, what, what I would say is it, you, you may have registered your club and perhaps the... The, the contact person is the chairperson or the president or something like that. We would advise that whoever is actually doing the work for drawing down the grant is the contact person because it does cause a delay if, you know, the, the emails that go through the system for your formal approval or whatever will go automatically to the club, to the contact person rather than the person maybe who's doing all the work and who's actually uploading the documentation, etc. So that's just one thing in case um, if you're actually going to be doing the work to make sure that you are the registered contact person uh, for the club, okay? Um, and nothing else now. Oh, yeah, the main thing to remember, I, sh I shall just, uh, yeah, that's the, the homepage of the portal. The main thing to remember when you're logging on is uh, the, your username is the tax registration number for the club. Everybody forgets that all the time. They're trying to log on. They can't remember that the, the username is always the tax registration number for the club. Um, uh, there's a list of contact people. So you would have got an email, the provisional allocation email, and that will probably have come. The name on the end would be the person who will be dealing with your grant, who's dealing with your county or your, your organization. If you can't remember who that is, there's a list here. I'll just point. If you click on that, um, the list of the numbers for the people who are dealing with the various counties comes up there. Um, there's some changes going on at the moment. It has been kind of fairly steady for the last few years, but we, there's a bit of change going on at the moment. But the number will stay the same. So um, if you're in Mayo, the number for Mayo will be the same. You'll, you'll, you'll get the person who's dealing with your organisation. Okay. Now, before you race ahead and you're wondering, you know, when am I going to get the cheque in the post, there's quite a lot of work that has to be done before... Uh, will you get to the stage we're actually going to get any money into your account. So you would have recently received, well in October I think, received your email from the department provisionally allocating the grant. So the email that you got will explain uh, what you have to do in order, to, what you have to submit in order for the project to be formally approved. So any work that's done prior to the date of the provisional allocation email will not be reimbursed. That's abs an absolute uh, no, no. You do not do any work before you get your, your email. If, if you submit any invoices that are dated prior to the provision allocation email, they'll be returned to you. We cannot uh, cover them. You shouldn't commence any work until you get your formal approval email. Any work that you undertake prior to receiving formal approval, you'll be doing at your own risk and may not be reimbursed by the department. If you've got any questions in relation to any process or, or any documentation you've got, call first before you do anything that's that's unorthodox or anything anything unusual. The most important thing I think is you need to read your provisional allocation email. The number of people that ring us up and ask, you know, a fairly a question and we say, Well have you read your email? No. You know, most people I know it it seems fairly daunting. It's quite long and a lot of the information might not be relevant to your club. Um, if it's an equipment grant, for example, you know a lot of the stuff that's in the the allocation email won't be won't be relevant to you. But the best thing to do is to read the email and highlight the areas that do that are relevant to you, and um, just make sure that that you're not doing anything outside of of the ordinary. Um, and if you are, as I said, contact the person who deals with your your file if you're just a little bit concerned that it's you know that it's not going to meet the criteria. So what you do to get formal approval. For all, ca in all cases, equipment or no matter what your, your grant has been allocated for, you will require three comparable tenders or quotations for each element of the work being done and the equipment sought. It's usual to proceed with the lowest tender. So if the preferred tender is for more than 10,000 euro, you must up also upload a current tax clearance cert for your chosen supplier or contractor. So comparable quotations is actually very important there. Um, you know, we will sometimes, somebody will submit three quotations and it's very, very clear that the suppliers were not asked 
for the same thing at all. They'll be completely different. And that's the main thing we would say is we need they need to be comparable. Um, you know, you can't you can't give different dimensions to different suppliers if you're doing a pitch or something like that. They must be exactly the same. Um, and it, the same for equipment. That's particularly important with equipment as well as y y they must be line by uh, there must it must be a line by line comparison with. You know, so if you're, you're you you give your list to the suppliers, they must come back and be line by line comparable because it makes it very difficult for the person who's who's examining it at the other end, and you know you don't want to be getting their back up at that early stage in the process. You know, you <coughs> so try to to make uh, sure that all your your quotations are comparable, um, and as few quotations as possible also because um, we don't want uh, three quotations separately for each item of equipment or you know if you if if you're going for you know several if yeah, for equipment particularly, we, we want as few quotations as possible because there's nothing worse than logging on and seeing somebody has uploaded 40 quotations and, you know, you're going to have to spend half the day look, making sure they're comparable, etc. Um, if you're not going for the lowest tender or the lowest quotation, then you must provide an explanation. Um, generally speaking, unless uh, it's specialist equipment or something, we will be looking for three quotations. Um, and as I said, if, if, you're, if you're not going for the lowest, you must have a good reason to do so. And your, maybe your technical advisor might, might have, uh, you know, be able to have to write out uh, an explanation for you. We might be looking for kind of further information if you aren't going with the lowest quotation because we're not technical people. And, you know, sometimes um, if, you're, if you're going for, uh, for a higher quotation, we will need kind of some, some backup, some documentary evidence that, that that is the way to go for you. Um, in terms of the tax clearance cert for your suppliers if you're using an overseas supplier we do also require a tax clearance cert from revenue in Ireland and there's a special section in I think it's in revenue in Limerick that provide tax clearance for overseas suppliers and uh, it's it's not an arduous process they do it they can turn it around fairly fast as well so just in case you are going with even a, somebody a company in Northern Ireland or anything like that you you will need tax clearance cert from revenue in the Republic interject yes. there. Uh, when there's a large project, uh, oftentimes you're going to put together a tender specification and that's going to be sent out to the uh, put it out to tender. And they're going to return just the page for the price. If that's the case, uh, also upload your tender specification mm -hmm. and most likely you'll also have a tender report from your uh, technical supervisor, so upload that as well. And also for the other thing, when you're going for one that's not the cheapest, that tender report to help with that as well. Yeah. Okay, uh, another state, more for getting formal approval here. You must have full planning permission if required for the project. At your, the time of application, you may have uploaded um, evidence of a planning application, but prior to getting formal approval, you will need to have full planning. Um, if a deed of covenant in charge is not required, you will also have to uh, sign a, a declaration form. So that will involve, um, that will be, have, that you will, be told in your provision allocation email whether or not you require a deed or not. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. But if it's a declaration form that's required, it is a, a three-page form that has to be signed by all the trustees of the club and witnessed by a solicitor. Um, that's for if the grant is over €10,000. Um, basically, the declaration form just says that you, you will keep the grant-aided facility in sporting use for 15 years. Um, yeah, at that stage, yeah, you'll also need a current tax year insert for the club. Oh yeah, I should say that the declaration form is the only document that we require you to submit in hard copy. Everything else will be submitted through the portal, but the declaration form um, signed and witnessed, uh, but signed by the trustees and witnessed by the solicitor, you will also have to post that in in hard copy. Okay, um, a deed of covenant charge. Firstly, you know, I don't know, if m most of you have probably heard, heard of it. Some people will be in the loop with this and others won't. A deed of covenant and charge is required if you have uh, grants of over, cumulatively over 300,000 euro. Um, the, the threshold has changed over the years, so it may be that your, your club got a grant for 150,000 euro in 2005. You will probably have a deed because the, the, the threshold was lower then. What it means is the minister has put a, a charge on your property similar to a mortgage, and it just protects the minister's interest if, for example, the club decided to sell that site um, within 15 years 
then the department may look for the depreciated amount back from you. So it depreciates over 15 years, and if your grant was, you know, for 150,000 euros, say, 15 years ago, it will be worth zero. We will be looking for zero back today. But it, as I said, it, it, there's a calculator there, and I can provide it for anybody who's kind of maybe interested if they were in, in that position. But um, yeah, so basically it's a charge on the property um, and it will be required to be updated. So if uh, you already have one and you've got a new grant, we will have to put the Chief State Solicitor's Office on notice that you have a new grant. It's generally speaking, if your deed is registered already, it doesn't require a lot of work and it shouldn't delay you. But if you're concerned about it in any way, um, I would c immediately get on to the person who's your file handler and make sure that they have commenced the process with the Chief State Solicitor's Office because it does delay things. It potentially has it has potential to delay, delay things significantly if there are any issues with the title in the land registry or anything. Okay, that's why the title requirements actually for at the application stage stage are so strict because that's why we require you to have registered title because if if this if you require a deed covenant in charge it could take years to sort it out if there's any issues with your title if you weren't already registered. Yeah. So if there's an existing deed in place, you contact your solicitor and ensure that they've already registered it with the, the property registration authority. That will cause a delay if it's not already registered. That will be the first thing that the Chief State Solicitor's Office will be looking for. They'll be looking for evidence that the previous deed was registered. So if you have an existing deed in place, the new grant will be added to the existing amount on the deed. I should mention also that since 2002, all of the deeds are for present and future advances. And what that means is... Prior to 2002, people would have had to start the process ex completely from the start and it would be a new charge, whereas for, since 2002, it's not a new charge, but it's just the new amount is noted, so it's, it's, uh, it's much faster. So for projects allocated 300,000 or less, and that's everybody over the last couple of years because the threshold has gone down, um, all tax clearance certs have to be kept up to date for the duration of the project. It's very important for your suppliers and your contractors for you always to have an up to date tax clearance cert for them. And we've had a few situations over the years where people have got formal approval for one contractor, they go off and they decide, oh, we'll give the job to somebody else. And then it come, they, they submit the invoices to us and we, the, we say, well, can you get a tax clearance cert for this contractor? And they can't. They, uh, we had one poor guy in Monaghan who was going on for years and years and years. years yeah. yeah, years. Uh, the poor man ringing us every every two or three months with the update, and they, you know, they were three thirty five thousand euro out of pocket for about four or five years. Has he ever got paid? Did he get he did. Is he recently sorted? So, so just don't just check. Don't just get your tax clearance insert when you're applying for formal approval. Yeah. When you're actually making a payment, make sure then that there's a valid tax clearance insert. Yeah, don't give them any money until you have an, an, a current tax clearance insert because we won't reimburse you until we have a current tax clearance insert for that contractor or supplier. So if this, if your project is a continuation of a project where the OPW was previously involved, um, we we had a, a, an architect in the OPW who used to look after larger projects for us. Um, he's retired recently, so we're looking at what we're going to replace him with probably a, a bore. A, maybe a board of of, tech, of approved technical advisors. So if previous, if this, the only re way this will affect you is if the uh, OPW was previously involved in your project and this is a continuation of that project. So it probably wouldn't, won't be the case for most people that are here. So, but if it is, um, we will be appointing someone to monitor the project. So again, this is the, for projects uh, which were allocated more than 300,000 cumulatively, you must complete a deed of covenant and charge. The department's technical advisor, who we haven't got yet, but we will have by the time I'm sure it comes to it, will have a role in monitoring the project. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we require in terms of the technical supervision. Um, if if you're, it is a large project or a continuation project, I'll run through this very quickly because it probably doesn't apply to most people. The department will appoint a technical advisor to monitor the project and their role will be to approve the project early in the design stage. So they'd be looking for your tender documentation, drawings, planning, etc. Um, they will monitor progress on the facility, certify each payment and in certain cases inspect the site works. This is separate to the grantee's obligations in terms of appointing a suitable technical supervisor. This is a, a representative for the department rather than for the club. Um, it, 
Yeah, you should be, I, I suppose people should be probably glad that they, they don't get a grant of this size because it slows everything down in terms of everything that comes into the department has to be sent on to them. We have to wait for it co to come back and give you formal approval, whereas in, in the, the, the grants for lesser amounts, we're able to move it along faster and do it ourselves. Okay, I'll just go quickly through uploading documents to the portal. So you log on using your username and password. There's a forgotten password facility there which requires the, the email address which uh, is the, the email address for the contact person must be used for, for that forgotten password facility. Um, if you need to change the primary contact, you need to contact the department. I think you can change, you can change the, the details change there in the, the email, email address. address. Yeah. So that's another thing I'd advise is, is that when, you're, when you are putting an email address in there, that's a club email. Mm -hmm. So when the new person moves into yeah. the position, they take over that email yeah. that's only to change that. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, so you need to think about who is going to be managing the drawdown as well. Yeah, so this should be the person who's appointed as your primary contact and not necessarily, you know, the, the, the president or somebody like that. Um, the person who's actually doing the work needs to be the, con the primary contact person. Okay, this is the app. This is how, so you will have, you log in and you'll be brought to this applications page. And here you'll see um, any grants that are open to the club. This is just a test page, but I'll, I'll, I'll point it out. Any grants that are open to the club, you'll be able to see uh, the name and the status of the grant. So if it's formally approved, you'll see that over there on the application status. Um, so all, you may have applications going back for years. You'll be able to see there uh, what, what you've got and what status each one has. Um, you see there, you might, the valid no funding means that the application was valid, but the minister decided didn't make any allocation to the club that year. Uh, grant provisionally allocated there, so that means that would be the grant that the status of any 2015 grant allocation. So what you do is you, you hit the edit button there and you can, it brings you to page 15. I don't think we, right there are we, yeah, yeah. So this is, it brings you into page 15 of the application. Um, firstly, I should say actually that the system is very, not very user friendly. We haven't been happy with it. We've had an awful lot of trouble with it, and it's actually going to be redesigned in the new year. Silverlight is going. Yeah. So um, it, it will look different, but not... It will look different, but the functionality will remain the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, yeah. So on this page, this is where you will be uploading your tenders, your planning permission, your tax clear inserts. Um, you hit the add button. And it brings you onto, uh, I think I've actually got two pages the same here. Yeah. It, you hit the add button, it brings you um, into a, a second page where you say if you're going to upload a tax year, insert a quotation, etc. One thing to remember is you have to uh, indicate where, which was your preferred supplier. So if your grant is only for one thing, say pitch development, then you upload three quotations and you indicate which one is your preferred supplier. But if your grant is for security fencing and pitch development, you upload your, your documentation for your preferred supplier indicating whether it's security fencing or pitch development. Even if you've got one quotation which covers both, just upload the, the quotation a second time and make sure that you've got both, uh, sub, both covered. Every Isn't purpose right? of the grant has yeah, to every have purpose at least one quotation and at least one, one preferred, preferred quotation. Yeah. So that would be just one quotation for them. Yeah, because a lot of people get stuck at that stage and they can't understand why it won't let them move forward. And that's generally the reason is if there's more than one um, purpose for the grant that you must have a preferred supplier for each one. Okay. Yeah, this is the next page. So you must um, upload your bank details there. And um, this will be the account that you'll be using that you want the grant money to be lodged to. We'll probably at, at, uh, also maybe if, if you're not, if you haven't had a grant before and you need to be set up on our, our finance system, we may look for a copy of a bank statement from you just to confirm that this is the, 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 the bank statement for the club. OK, so providing you get through all of this and you get to the formal approval stage, which uh, it, it, it is a, a milestone because um, when you got your provisional grant allocation, there would have been a, what we call a sunset date, which is like approximately two years, yeah, two years after the allocation. And if the minister, for some reason, decides to get a notion that, that this date has passed and he's going to withdraw a grant, what he'll be wanting to know is how many people are formally approved. So if you're formally approved, it puts you into a safer category for drawing down your grant. Even if you haven't drawn down any money, it means that you're you're not in the firing line for, for withdrawal anyway because you're just you're, you're just in a safer position at that stage. 
So how are the grants paid? The department pays out grants in stages as your project proceeds and upon submission of detailed valid paid invoices, receipts or pro forma invoices, statements or any other document won't be accepted for payment, they'll be returned to you. A completed certificate of compliance and schedule of invoices. This is one document. Um, this will be sent out to you with your formal approval email. So basically it's just uh, two people sign off on it. It's signed by one person and witnessed by another club member just to say that the invoices that you're submitting were used for the project and you will have just a list of the invoices that you are submitting. Will we also look for proof of payment, which is usually a statement from a financial institution. So we need to see that the, the grant has, has been paid and you'll if if it's a bank statement, you could, should highlight maybe which, which payment uh, is referring to which invoice. Okay. Also, I should say that when you're uploading um, an invoice, you should, at that stage, as Brenda said, make sure that the, your tax clearance cert for your supplier is in date at that stage. So we'll be looking for another one if it isn't. So you can also pay an invoice in stages. So if you're worried that maybe, you know, you, you haven't got the funding to cover the full entire invoice, we will accept that you pay a part of it and we will reimburse you on that part. And then you could pay another part and we will reimburse you again. So, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're given a large invoice for 100,000 and you don't have the full amount, you know, we will accept that you paid a, a part of that invoice. Oh, no, sorry, I didn't do that one. Right, a proper invoice, what we call a proper invoice, should be made out to the club, so it should be in the club's name. It should contain the contractor or supplier's name, address and VAT registration number. It should be clearly marked as an invoice, so it should have the word invoice appear, clearly appearing on it. It should have an invoice number and contain a clear description of the work or goods purchased and con contain a clear VAT breakdown. So, you know, it's not sufficient to submit an invoice that just says works carried out. You know, it will be returned to you. We need to see that the invoice is for whatever the grant is allocated for, basically. Okay, please note that payments will only be made for works done in relation to the purpose for which the grant was allocated. Payments will only be made for invoices from approved suppliers. So at formal approval stage, we will actually name the suppliers or the contractors that are approved. And if you submit an invoice from somebody else, you know, we'll be coming back to you for questions. We won't be making any payment on those invoices unless it's been formed. Those contractors or suppliers are formally approved. And if there's some difficulty with the supplier you've been approved for, you should come back to us first uh, with a new proposal rather than going ahead with another supplier without consulting us first. Yeah. Uh, all grants will be paid by EFT and you should ensure bank details for your club are correct on the portal. We, we often have that where somebody rings up and says, well, I didn't get, I didn't get my payment. Um, and we look on the system and we see, yes, it is paid. And uh, we say, no, no, it's paid. And they said, no, no, no. And, and, and we go back to the finance division and we see that it was paid into account, but the club have decided that it's, uh, they're going, they would prefer things to be in a new account, but haven't told us. So make sure that your contact, the, club, the bank details are correct and that that is the, the account and that if you don't close down that account without telling us because those details will remain on our system until, um, until you tell us otherwise. So the rate of payment, um, this can be a little bit confusing. The department pays at the following rates, 95% if you're in a rapid area or a regional project, 90% if you're in a CLAR area, and 85% if you're not in a disadvantaged area. Now this would have been decided at application stage. So if you're in a rapid area, you would have provided evidence of being in a rapid area, or if you're in a CLAR area, you would have provided evidence of that at application stage. So. What it means is if you submit an invoice for a uh, hundred euro, you'll get 95 back if you're in a rapid area, 90 if you're in a core area, and 85 if you're in, not in a disadvantaged area. We get a lot of questions on how, how much do I have to spend to draw down my entire grant. Basically, divide your grant by 0 0.95, 0 0.9, or 0 0.85 as, as applicable. Um, do you want me to just get that question off a lot? Mm -hmm. Um, when you upload your payment request, you should allow 10 working days from when the department receives your paperwork and finds everything in order until you, you, you will see the money in your bank account. Now, it might happen faster, but we say to allow 10 working days anyway because it can take up, up to that length of time depending on um, how busy things are. Okay, this is uh, so once you've got formal approval, you can log on and um, upload your payment requests here. So you log on there and you can see at the top of uh, the page there, you see schemes, drafts, application, payments, documents. That's where you make your payment request. So you log on there and um, you see there, select application, MR, test, 
this is a little bit confusing in the current it's, system. It's, it's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. It, yeah. it basically, when you click that, 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 uh, that drop-down menu, what you'll see is that summary that you wrote about your project. Uh, you'll see, you'll mm. see that there. That's, that, that's what's in the drop-down. Yeah. Uh, that will be changed, but at the moment, it, the, you know, you've got to kind of know what to do. What you're looking for. You can do yeah. it. You can do it. You, you can kind of just select the first one. If that if if that button there, apply for payment, doesn't appear, you've selected the wrong one. Mm -hmm. So then go down, and uh, it, that button, apply for payment, will only appear for the one you have formal approval for. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what, what I meant to say is actually, I know Richard is going to be talking about bridging finance, etc. But um, where we can help out is if, if you're having any trouble securing bridging finance um, and you might require a letter from the department, maybe just to say that you have a grant. Um, we, we, we regularly write letters for our banks and Clon Credo, etc. Just to say that confirming that people have a grant and that it's formally approved and that it will be paid. Um, and what rate will be paid at? So if, if if anybody needs anything like that, you know, just just ring your the person who's your contact person, and they'll they'll get a letter for you, and they can send it directly to the bank or to yourself. Or Although most of the time they will take that email, yeah, like formal approval email. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Most of the time they'll take that. Mm -hmm. So this is how you apply for a payment. Log into the portal, go to the payments page. If you have formal approval, you'll be able to choose the application and apply for the payment. If you've got more than one grant application, that that page is it can be a little bit confusing, as I said. When you submit documents, this is the the. Hang on, am I on the next page? Yep. So once you apply for a payment, this is wh wh what you'll be seeing. You, you use the add button there, and you'll be adding your invoice, your proof of payment, and your certificate of compliance at this stage. Okay. Yeah. So when you when you actually uh, submit your payment request. It comes up on the dashboard on the computer screen of the person who's dealing with your file, so they can see that you've applied for a payment. So you, we, we'll continue to pay your grant. Up, uh, if it's a capital project, we pay it up to retention. So we'll hold back 5% until we receive confirmation from your technical supervisor that the project has been completed satisfactorily or that the defects liability period has passed, and if one uh, applies. It should be, that should say, and that oh, sorry. the period <laughs> yeah. has passed. Yeah. So if one applies, you, you, you may not have a defects liability period. It depends on your project and your technical supervisor will know that. Uh, they vary in length. It could be a six-month um defects liability period or maybe a year so um, that's just I suppose the period of time just any snags or anything like that are sorted out so we will be looking for um, confirmation um, that the defects liability period has passed we'll also be looking for confirmation that the deed of covenant has been registered where required so if you were involved in having a deed we will need your solicitor to confirm that it has been registered at that stage so this is how we monitor the project um, when making when you're making a second or subsequent payment request, you'll have to confirm, take a button on the portal that the previous payments were received. Um, you must confirm compliance with the terms and conditions with each drawdown request. Um, we have an active capital inspections program and they randomly inspect facilities and all associated documents. What happens there is that uh, the finance unit in the department will take a random sample of payments from last year and they will just write out to the club and say, we're coming to visit, we're, we want, we're concerned with a certain payment. We're not concerned, they're, it relates to a certain payment and they'll be looking for just the paper trail for, for that payment and they might need to look at, uh, you know, whatever the, faci the facility that the, the grant r relates to. Um, let me just see. Yeah, they, they, they'll arrange to, to visit the club and they'll, they'll um, arrange for someone to meet them there. So they'll examine the documentation on the premises. And if they've got any concerns about anything, they'll come back to the file handler in, in, in Dublin, in Dublin, in, in Kerry. And um, if everything is in order, which it usually is, we will get confirmation that, you know, there are no issues. And if anything, if there is anything arising, any concerns, or if you didn't have documentation available on the day, um, we'll write out to you just to, to look for it at that stage. But usually we haven't, we don't have too many problems um, just now and again. Okay, so if you're unsure about anything, you need to contact the department. It's not always possible to 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 recover something if you go too far and uh, if you go without forward without formal approval or something like that. It's not sometimes not possible to retrace your steps and recover the situation. Um, okay. Oh, here. How slow is it? What am I doing? Oh, this is a fancy one. Oh, sorry. Pointers. <laughs> okay. Keep the department officials updated in relation to any project delays. 
Uh, credit facilities can be difficult to obtain. As I said, the department can provide you with a letter for your financial institution on request. I've had a situation uh, recently now with one club. They've got funding from Clan Credo and I, they, I've ha I have to confirm every time a payment is made with Clan Credo that we're making the payment. So that, 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 that I don't know. I haven't had to do that before. That might be a new thing, Richard. I don't know. Uh, the longest delay in the drawdown of a grant can be complying with the legal requirements. So if you require a deed, this should be the first item on your list. So you need to make sure that whoever is handling your file is on top of that and that they're, they have sent the instruction to the Chief State Solicitor's Office because that can be a delay um, between the solicitors and the Chief State Solicitor's Office. You know, it might not be their number one pri priority and you need to maybe keep make sure that things are moving along and that your solicitor is responding to them. So make sure that the work being undertaken is in accordance with the allocation made. As you said, like make sure that um, if your your grant is for for pitch development, that that is what is what what you're what you're actually doing. If you have any query, contact the relevant department official looking after your grant. And uh, we don't have any technical expertise in relation to artificial pitches or anything like that. So you should need to consult with the FAI in relation to any advice that you need. So. Yeah, it, there's a lot of paperwork involved in this and it can be a bit daunting, um, but it, it, it is fairly straightforward if you just, uh, you know, read your provision allocation email, highlight the things that are relevant to you and what you need to submit. And if you've got any questions about anything, don't hesitate to, to contact um, the, the person in the department who's looking after, after your file because they'll give you the best advice. They'll be the people who are interpreting what you're sending in. So it's best if, you're, if anything is out of the ordinary that you talk to them first so that they know uh, what, what's coming in. So we hope we, the new system should be more user friendly than the, the current one. And uh, it is going to be redesigned in the new year and we hope that it will make it more user friendly. So that's it. Thank you very much.